good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to a very barefaced ellie i'm starting this vlog with no makeup on and i'm not gonna lie that's not something i feel awfully confident in doing and i'm feeling a bit like <laughs> it sounds so silly but i just feel a bit mm, about being on camera completely barefaced and I kind of wanted to get over that and like really force myself to come on camera and show you guys my makeup free face and show you that like not every YouTuber that you see has perfect skin and I'm going through a bit of a journey with my skin at the moment. If you've been following me for a while you will know that I've been having a bit of a battle with acne and I thought I kind of like hit the nail on the head last year and my skin was looking so so clear i absolutely loved it i was so so happy and then and then i think it was like mainly stress that basically it just brought my skin straight back to square one the acne had gotten really really bad again and yeah i'm kind of on the process of recovery but i'm not quite there yet and i was contemplating waiting on filming this video because i've had so so many requests from you guys about my everyday makeup and i was like yeah yeah i'll get around to it but not yet this, my skin's not good enough yet and then i kind of had to have a bit of a worm myself and i was like ellie like not everyone's skin is perfect it's okay to show your imperfect skin on the internet and i really had to have a word with myself so here i am today showing my very very imperfect skin um but i thought today we could do a bit of an everyday makeup routine because i've had quite a few requests from you guys to do this so let's jump straight in shall we and kickstart my everyday makeup now i did actually film a kind of like skin based tutorial over on my instagram i did like an igtv I'll link that down below if you do want to check that out. I go into a bit more detail, kind of like how I'm covering up my acne and stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll go through that as well today. But just in case you wanted to watch that, I'm just going to tie my hair off my face. Because there is nothing worse than your hair, like, dangling in your face as you're doing your makeup. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really struggling with my hair at the moment. I think it's because it's getting so, so long. And and I was actually due a haircut this week. Um, but obviously, that's not going to be happening. And especially now that I've got a bit more, like, kind of, like, fringy bang kind of a vibe going on. I really think you definitely notice when I need a haircut. And I'm really struggling with styling it. And it's really frustrating me. Um, anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. So, first thing I'm going to start off with is... The NARS Creamy Concealer. I absolutely love this concealer. I got sent it, um, I think it was back in November, maybe even December. And um, they sent it with their mattifying foundations. And I just tried it and it's the perfect like acne covering concealer. It's not shiny at all. It's quite a mattifying concealer. And normally when it comes to like foundation stuff, I like something a bit glowy. I like something that's gonna kind of like radiate on my skin. Whereas when it comes to, obviously, like, concealing spots or acne or anything, you don't want anything shiny because it's just going to draw attention. So I just take a concealer brush and basically, before even... Oh, I've also already, like, moisturised and cleansed and everything like that. Um, so I have a very blank canvas. Um, but basically, before I put on my proper base, I will put on the concealer and I will just kind of, like, dot where the acne is um, just to cover it up a bit more. So if I show you... Now one thing I'm definitely going to have to learn is that it looks very different on camera to how it does in real life. Um, but basically I've just kind of gone over, obviously because you can tell I'm fake tan, so like my face is a very, very different colour to the rest of me. Um, but I've just kind of concealed around that and it just kind of covers the blemishes a bit more and does a good job of masking them so that once you put the foundation over the top it gives a much more, I want to say flawless, but it's obviously not flawless, but a much more kind of like built up coverage and still looks quite natural um so next i'm going to go in with dior forever skin glow this is like one of my favorite foundations i did a campaign with dior actually on this i love this so so much and back then was when my skin was like at its best so it's quite interesting that i love this foundation for when my skin is good and bad it's a really really good foundation for that um i am the shade 1n that is like my slightly fake tanned shade um 
not for, this wouldn't be my summer shade i'll probably need to get a new one in summer but this is my like winter fake tan shade um but yeah i basically use a sigma round kabuki brush and buff that in what i will then do once i've done my foundation is go in with the givenchy what's this called prism libre I believe that's how you pronounce it. It is their matte finish like uh, setting powder and it's a really, really cool mixture. Can you see that? It's like a mixture of three different colors, which is really, really cool. So it creates this like really, <laughs> just got that all over myself. Um, it creates like a really flawless, not too matte, not too like, what's the word? Cakey finish and i would literally just take i actually take a real techniques brush this is in 300 which isn't actually a um mattifying it's not a powder brush but i find it a really really good um brush for for just kind of like powdering but without it being too cakey especially because i quite like to spot powder i don't powder the entirety of my face otherwise i find it can get quite cakey i just kind of powder around where i want the fuller coverage to be i mean as you can see it's definitely not like 100 percent perfect you can still see a little bit of texture around here but i don't like to go too cakey with my makeup i still like it to be quite breathable especially because i'm at home a lot i don't want my skin to like worsen from covering it up too much so that's what i tend to do with regards to foundation and then as you can see i still am a little bit pale so i'm going to bronze up with nars laguna bronzer absolute classic as you can see i love this a lot i have hit pan but i'm still going with it so what i tend to do is pinch my brush like this to create like a really harsh line and then i will blend it out fully so that it's like a little bit more subtle and i find that's the best way because i have quite a round face to actually create a cheekbone on myself as you can see that is like a very harsh line and then basically i'll just take my brush and blend it up never go down below your cheekbone otherwise it could look like a bit muddy but if you just like blend up it, sh it will be like a lot more flattering and it will bronze up the rest of your face if you kind of like keep blending up et voila a little bit more bronzed obviously i don't like to go like too ham um but just gives me a little bit more of a cheekbone the next i'm going to go in with highlight this is the nars capri highlighter very subtle one and I literally just brush it up at the top of my cheekbones. Not gonna lie, I don't know how makeup artists, like the makeup girls on, in, on YouTube do it because it really does look a lot darker on camera than it does in real life, which is really bizarre. I'm gonna have to get used to that. Um, so next, I'm going in with brows. I love the Dior, it's just called the Dior Brow Styler. Um, I use the shade one. This is something I've spoken about a couple of times. Because I have brunette hair, a lot of people don't believe that I'm shade one. But one really random fact about me is that I have really, really dark eyebrows. And if I go for my shade, it looks really like just too much. So I always go for a shade lighter and I actually lighten my eyebrows whilst I like go through it. Um, I just find that's what works best with me. Obviously, everyone's different, but that's what I find to be like the most successful in terms of my brows. I'm not gonna lie, I am really basic when it comes to my eyebrows. I don't do an awful lot. I just take the spoolie to brush them up a bit. I have very like spindly eyebrows, like really thick, wiry hairs. So, but I just have like a few gaps, as you can see like in this one. And one thing I do hate is that my eyebrows are not sisters, they're not even friends, they're not even distant cousins. Like, my eyebrows do not match in the slightest. But that's just something I've accepted. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I just literally, the tiniest little motion to kind of resemble brush strokes. And don't ever go below your eyebrow line because that will like bring your brows down and that is not flattering definitely gonna have to speed this up because this is gonna be really boring for you to watch et voila 
I've just used the Bobbi Brown waterproof brow shape gel just to set them in place again always brushing up and I use the clear gel because I do find personally on me any colored gels to be a little bit too much um but yeah and then we're going to move on to eyes now I'm not gonna lie I'm quite simple when it comes to eye makeup I kind of stick to the same thing every day um and especially in this lockdown I haven't been getting very experimental so I'm using the Laguna bronzer again I just find it kind of works with my skin tone. The fact that I've like bronzed up with it makes it look very, very natural. So I take a Real Techniques 203 brush. This is like a really nice fluffy brush. And I will just work this into my crease. And I just find it's very, very natural. It's a really, really nice way of kind of like bringing your whole face together. And then once that's blended in, I actually go in with NARS Orgasm Blush. I like a little hint of pink on my lids. I just think it's quite flattering and again, very, very natural. So I literally just sweep that across. And then just to finish off, we need a little bit of highlight in the corner. Again, a Real Techniques brush. And that's literally all I wear on my eyes. I always get so many questions from you guys about like what eyeshadow I'm wearing. And I hope this hasn't disappointed. I hope you haven't like been a bit let down <laughs> to see that it's actually just bronzer and blush. I hope that it's okay. Um, God, my lips literally blend into, this is the worst thing. I hate how they do that. Sorry, I'm getting out of focus. My lips literally blend into my face. This is one thing that I really hate about my lips. They're very thin anyway. And when I have makeup on and no lipstick, they blend into my face so badly. Um, anyway, so next I'm going to put on a bit of liner. I really like just a really subtle little bit of liner. I always get questions about this, about like my technique, how I do it. In all honesty, it has just been years of experience. When I was at school, really weirdly, I don't know why, but the trend was to wear eyeliner. But like I didn't really wear foundation. So literally all the makeup that I wore to school was, was eyeliner a bit of mascara and some lip balm <laughs> don't ask why um but yeah so for some reason back then i remember we would always say foundation for like special occasions anyway so i used to literally do like a winged liner every single day for like four years of my life so i have definitely become quite a like seasoned veteran in it the only thing i will say in terms of like tips and stuff is basically you want it like a 45 degree angle from your eye I find that the most flattering and I know a lot of people actually start with the flick. I personally prefer to start with the like line around your eye so that I can kind of like blend the flick into that line. Um, so yeah, I now feel quite under pressure to do a good liner. Hopefully, hopefully it's not going to go wrong. Um, oh, if you're wondering, this is the Ico London Black Magic. I either use this or the MYX, love them both. They are great, very, very black. This one's just a little bit finer, so I like this for every day. Right, I'm not gonna be able to talk whilst I do this. Okay, so we have done the main bit. I'm gonna bring you in a little bit. Oh, wow, this is very close. This is not something I'm normally comfortable doing. But just to show you how I do the flick, because I just get so many questions, so I thought it would be easiest just to, like, show you. Wow, okay. I'm not going to look at the viewfinder, because that's very close. Um, but, yeah, basically, as I said, 45-degree angle, and I literally just bring it in, and I feel so under pressure right now. Also, one thing as well, to make the eyeliner blacker, sometimes I find as I'm going, it, like, starts to dry up, just push the felt tip onto your hand like that, and then the ink like goes to the end of the tip. So, um, okay, no talking. <laughs> we did it, we did it. Okay, I can bring you back out again. We don't need to be this close to my face. Um, so as you can see, a nice 45 degree angle and it just brings your lids up a little bit. I like the cat flick. I find it quite flattering on my face shape. And then lastly, 
mascara. Now I've currently been using the NARS Climax Extreme Mascara, which I really do like. I'm not gonna lie, I think it's not the kind of mascara that I would wear like out and about because it does transfer quite a bit, but I do really like it. The one that I would wear out and about is the Too Faced Better Than Sex. Love that, however, I do find like when I'm in lockdown, I'm not really leaving the house. This one is just perfect because it creates a really, really nice, quite dramatic lash, but it's not too difficult to take off at night. Like you don't have to scrub your eyes. Um, so yeah, I just kind of like wiggle that onto the lashes. Oh, is it really a mascara day if you haven't got mascara on your face? And as you can see, there is quite a bit difference between mascara and no mascara i love it i also just wiggle just a little bit on my lower lash line i don't like too much because otherwise it looks a little bit too spidery for me do you know what this is going to be so funny to edit back myself because you know when you don't realize the faces you make when you put makeup on and then you like watch it back and you're like whoa that is a weird face um okay cool that is the face done i'm now just going to finish off with lips have my moody drawer of lips it's over here and I've pretty much been doing the same thing with my lips for about three weeks now. And I, and I really like it. So I use the Clinique Intense Blush. This is the shade. The lip liner. And I do overline my lips a little bit because, as I said, I have very, very thin lips. Now, I do overline my lips because, as I said, I do have very, very thin lips. And it is something I'm a little bit self-conscious of. So I like to just kind of like, instead of having to get proper surgery done, all I do is overline my lips. And I feel like that's a good enough fix for me. Um, so yeah, I just, to be fair, I do actually quite like the shape of my lips. I just don't like the size of them. I wish they were a bit plumper. Biggest kind of choosers, like, you know what I mean? It's fine, they're fine. So I'm just going to, I can't talk when I do that. I'm gonna overline my lips now. Et voila. The difference that lip liner makes is actually unreal um and then lastly i have been using the nars after the lip balm and orgasm just to finish off because i like how moisturizing it is and i really like the color i also really like how glowy they are i find that actually glowy lipsticks make your lips look plumper i do find if i use a matte lipstick they can look even flatter than they already are um so yeah definitely prefer a little bit of glow on my lips so um yeah that is my everyday makeup now i'm gonna do my hair i haven't decided what i'm doing with my hair today i don't know if i can be bothered to curl it ow i don't know if i can be bothered to curl it or whether to just like leave it straight i'm undecided i think i quite like it straight today actually but what i am going to do is i'm going to do my little trick to make the fringy bits kind of poof up a little bit um so if i show you what i do I think this might be quite interesting for you guys because I know a lot of people have these kind of like 70s fringy bits as well at the moment. Um, let me grab my hair straightener. <laughs> so we use the GHD Platinum Plus straighteners over here. I have been a GHD fan literally since I started straightening my hair when I was like 12. Um, and did anyone else do this as a kid? They would like, I saw a really funny video actually. And they were like straightening the front. They were like me as, four, as a 14 year old, like straightening the front perfectly. And then they turned around and it was like a matted mess at the back that used to be me i remember once going to the hairdresser and he was like ellie there is a bird's nest back here <laughs> um and i also used to straighten over my knots instead of brushing them out god like the noughties was such a bad time for hair and skin and makeup what i'm just gonna do i did kind of like briefly straighten this before but i'm just gonna go back underneath and just make sure that it is properly straightened and what I also like to do is just a little bit of like a kink at the bottom, like a little bit of a kind of like bob underneath because I just think it's a bit more flattering on me. Okay, and then for these fringy bits, what I do is I just grab one like that. Obviously, you've got the rest of the hair all kind of like the same length. So I'll just grab it up. Take the hair straightener as close to your scalp as you can and give it a little twist around and then go up. And you see it kind of creates a little bit more of just like a, a kink, which I do quite like. If it's a little bit much, you can just straighten the kink down a bit. But I really, really like that because I just find it adds a little bit more like 
volume to my hair so I'll just do it to the other side as well et voila I do quite like that I think it's just a little bit more flattering I think it would be better when my fringy bits get a bit shorter again I am kind of tempted to cut them myself but I I just know my hairdresser would absolutely kill me if I did and also if it went wrong I think I would kill myself um but yeah I quite like that I think it's just a nice like bouncy quite 90s quite like share from um from clueless vibes i think it looks really really nice and especially with like the straighter bits at the bottom i do quite like just adds a little bit of volume so yeah that was probably an absolute mammoth of an everyday makeup i now need to get on with my day normally my makeup does not take this long um normally i'd say i can do it in about 20 minutes and then whatever i'm doing with my hair kind of on top of that so it doesn't normally take this long but obviously i've been like chatting through it so it is a little bit longer than normal but um yeah this is kind of just sorry i whenever i first do my hair i always play with it so much um so this is kind of just my everyday like basic makeup at the moment it's quite simple i quite like it to be a bit more simple in lockdown i don't want anything like too complicated that's going to take me too long um or also that doesn't feel comfortable on my face that's like one of the most important things is that i want it to feel comfortable and this feels very comfortable and also makes me a lot more confident because obviously i have kind of put a bit a bit of effort into like covering up my acne so yeah let's get on with the day now i was gonna say things to do and people to see no people to see just things to do i thought i would show you my muji jaws quickly because i do actually get quite a few questions on these now these are mainly just for lipsticks so down here we have all my charlotte tilbury lipsticks we do have a nars bronzer there um which fits quite nicely and then we've got pixie behind and then this one is mac and miscellaneous <laughs> so we've got mac YSL, I do have another YSL one, but I don't know where it's gone, which is a bit upsetting because it's a really, really nice colour. Um, this is Laura Mercier, a couple of my favourite Dior ones. And then back here are the Dior, um, these are the, what are they called? The reusable ones. Are you going to focus? These are the reusable ones that you like pop in and out of the, these ones, um, which are so, so handy. And then I've just got a Fenty lip gloss back there. What's this? This is a Bare Minerals lip gloss don't really wear lip glosses that much to be honest and then this last drawer here is like my favorite drawer this is just nars products i know i have a lot of nars lipsticks but they are my absolute fave so here we have just the classic lipsticks which i really really like um loads of different colors there and then what i really like about these drawers is you can see the colors so you don't have to like keep picking them out and um guessing which ones and then we've got the afterglow lip balms my absolute faves this is orgasm which i'm wearing today my other favorite one is dolce vita which is a little bit darker which i really really like um and then these are the minis which you would have seen in my what i got for christmas video um i absolutely love them they're so cute and then back here we have the afterglow oh that's come out the afterglow lip glosses um which i don't reach for as much but they are stunning absolutely stunning if you want to create a real like pow on your lips um and then i need to find room actually for the new ones that came in these are the matte ones i think i'm gonna have to take this eyeshadow palette out this is the afterglow eyeshadow palette it is stunning absolutely stunning it's got just the most perfect like really warm shades which as you know i'm not really wearing eyeshadow at the moment so that can probably go away in a different drawer and then these are the two lip liners that i tend to reach for that's kind of why they're in there and then these might be able to fit quite nicely here they're not going to fit that way are they not with the not with these annoyingly unless i move these over I mean that works and i can just find a little something 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 to go there that works quite well actually so yeah this is my my nars draw which i really really like um these i think you would have seen them in a recent vlog they are the new um mattes what are they actually called the air matte lip color which is so so nice um but I do find that like I have to have a really really glowy face to kind of get away with them because sometimes they can kind of like make my lips look a little bit thinner than they are so yeah favorite two colors I love this one love this one they're obviously not as like 
vibrant as they look on the packaging but they are still really really nice so yeah that's my those are my muji drawers i get a lot of questions about them so i thought i would just quickly show you guys them so you can see what they look like um but they are basically just my my house for all of my lipsticks i know i have far too many lipsticks but i just love lipsticks <laughs> so it's a little while later now but I thought I would show you a few new in things that have come in, seeing as this has been such a like heavy makeup video all about like beauty and stuff, I thought I would show you some new in makeup bits that have come into my collection because a lot of brands are like maybe releases that they've held back are pushing out releases now. So I've had quite a few new things come in at my collection that I thought I would show you guys that I'm very, very excited about. So let's start with lancome now i'm really really excited about this new mascara as i was saying about the mascaras today i do find that like i haven't quite found my perfect one yet i love the nars extreme climax is that what's called climax extreme one but as i said it does transfer a bit and i do find if i was to wear it out i do end up with like black smudges underneath i love better than sex but i do find it takes quite a lot to get it off and i do irritate my eyes a little bit that is something that I have actually I have really sensitive eyes and that's part of the reason why I don't wear a lot of um eyeshadow I find eyeliner is okay for me um but eyeshadow can really irritate my eyes if I wear too much of it which is why I tend to opt for the bronzer and blusher combo instead because I just I think it's a bit more gentler on my eyes than eyeshadow is um but anyway a new mascara from Lancome now this is the I'm, I think you pronounce it Idol. Um, but don't quote me on that. So this is their new mascara, which I'm really, really excited about. Obviously, Zendaya is the face of it, and this is the, um, press pack that they sent through. Can we just appreciate what a queen Zendaya is? She's not just the most stunning thing ever. Absolutely love it. So, what have they said about this mascara? They have said that it is introducing Lash Idol, the new lash lifting and volumizing mascara from Lancome. This revolutionary non-clumping mascara targets every single lash for instantly longer lifted lashes. Lancome has tapped into decades of research and in innovation to create a mascara that allows you to hit your lash goals with a flick of its game-changing mascara wand. Featuring a radical new gel emulsion formula that creates a feather-like feel, Lash Idol delivers jet black color and fanned out lashes that last up to 24 hours sounds really really exciting let's see what it looks like packaging is absolutely stunning it's this like stunning rose gold do you want to focus on that not my face <laughs> it's a stunning like rose gold with like a black detail and then the actual mascara wand oh i do love a curved wand oh it's not gonna focus on that now yeah man i do love a curved wand this looks absolutely stunning it's a plastic applicator but i do find that sometimes that creates a really really nice effect so i'm really excited to try that kind of wish i tried it today um but i didn't think of it before <laughs> i usually like keep this stuff um kind of like boxed up before i can show you guys because otherwise i just use it and then i don't talk about it or show you and i know it's really exciting to be able to see these new and things and also it's part of the reason why brands send them is that so that i can like talk about them try them out show you guys um so yeah and then i think you would have already seen the new and bits i got from laura mercier um which i i'm waiting for my skin to get a little bit better before i open this one this is the tint moisturizer um from laura mercier i got this in a bit of a darker shade than my other one so that it would suit my fake tan um because i do already have this in my collection but i just love the laura mercier tinted moisturizer and i haven't actually tried this this is the face illuminator and i'm so excited to give this a try because it is the most stunning stunning highlight now it looks a bit pinky for a highlight to me so i'm thinking this might be a really nice color on my eyes um shall i swatch it let's swatch it well that is gorgeous can you see that oh i did not swatch that in a good place for you guys to see let's swatch again that is absolutely stunning it's definitely quite pinky so i think if i was to use that as a highlighter it would have to be more of like a blush highlight for me um <laughs> my hands covered now but that i think will be a stunning stunning color for my eyes so i definitely need to put this stuff like in my current collection so i remember to use it next up it's actually quite an exciting new launch that i was contacted about and i'm really like i'm quite impressed misguided have now released a beauty line 
Oh, I do look quite light misguided. They have some um, nice, nice clothing. I do quite like some things, but I've never kind of thought of them as like a makeup brand. And I'm very interested to see what it's gonna be like and like what the products are like. Sorry, my hair is annoying me today. Um, this is a highlighting powder, which looks like a quite a similar color actually to the Laura Mercier one. It's a bit more peachy than the Laura Mercier, Mercier one. And I think that again would be a really, really nice eye color. They've also sent over Superfix. Very excited to give this a try. Um, this is fixing mist because as I said, I do find that sometimes my makeup can slip, especially wearing a mask at the moment. I do find that once I've worn a mask, as soon as I take off my mask, I just have a strip of like no makeup left, which drives me nuts. So very excited to give that a try. We also have a new liner, which as you guys know, I love my liners. It looks a bit thick, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but I'll be excited to try it and see what it's like, see how like black and dark it is um, and see how well it stays because there's nothing worse than a black eyeliner that turns gray by midday. I've had that in quite a few eyeliners in the past and I hate it, so excited to try that. They've also sent through thickening brow gel. Now this is colored, but they have sent me light. So this might work for my eyebrows, we shall see. Um, and then lastly, we have Dew Gloss Multi-Use Pot. I think this is an eyeshadow. Oh, it's a lip balm, but I think you can probably use this as a um, blusher if you like. I don't tend to use my lip balms as blushes, but that's a very nice like peachy pinky tone. I feel like you can never have too many lip balms in your life. I love me a nice lip balm. So yeah, really excited to give those a try. I think like a more affordable beauty line is quite an interesting one because it can be a bit hit or miss, but the looks of it is nice. I mean, the packaging's quite nice. It's obviously not like luxur luxurious or anything, but it does feel quite nice. Like it feels quite sturdy. It's obviously just like plastic packaging, um, but like the lip balm, I think this is glass. I'm not entirely sure, um, but it feels nice. Like the packaging feels nice. So yes, excited to try that. And then the last one, is another new one and now this is from a brand called skin proud and it's a brand that i haven't heard of before it says that they are exclusive at asos so i i don't know if this is asos's own skin uh, beauty company i don't know if they've kind of gone down the same lines as misguided and released their own but they've sent a few things a few things over so i thought i would show you them so we have first of all this is a jelly bright essence moisture abusing essence i don't know what an essence is i'm not gonna lie it's not something that caroline hirons has ever commented on before i don't believe so not entirely sure it says moisture abusing essence how to use it shape before use after cleansing moisten a cotton pad and gently smooth over face and neck follow with your usual skincare routine so i think this is kind of like an addition to a cleanser oh it smells very perfumed which I like in perfume. I don't know if I like in skincare. Like that is really, really strong. Do you know what that smells like? That almost smells like Mist Dior. That is very, very close scent. And then we also have a cooling eye serum stick, which I love these in summer. I was using them nonstop in summer. As I said, I have quite sensitive eyes and I do find that like when I've been wearing makeup all day and I've like, you know, been staring at my laptop screen and stuff, they can get really, really sore. So if you're someone that is on a laptop all day, you have maybe sensitive eyes, they can get quite sore. I would definitely recommend picking this up. I'll link all of this down below as well, by the way, in case you wanted to shop anything from the sort of like PR unboxing. Um, but I would definitely recommend an eye cooling gel. They're so, so good. I've tried a couple from Milk Makeup and I loved them. So I have a feeling I'm gonna love that too. And then the last thing is called a balance act. A balancing pink clay mask. It's a clay mask in a stick, guys. What? What? That is crazy. I don't know if I like the sound of that. I'm not gonna lie. How to use it. Smooth over dry skin, creating an even layer. Allow to dry five to 10 minutes. Rinse with warm water. Wipe away any excess. Might try that when I next have a bath because I do quite like a clay mask. I'm not gonna lie, I do like it, but I'm not sure how I feel about the fact that it's in a stick. That's a bit hit or miss for me. Um, but yeah, there we go. There's my little PR unboxing. I had that all waiting for you guys. I literally have not used any of this because I've been waiting to show it to you. So I hope you appreciate that. I've had a lot of restraint and a lot of self-control, um, but I always get really excited about new and makeup. I feel like 
sometimes makeup and beauty is something I don't talk about enough on my channel and I feel like sometimes because I get too wrapped up in like the fashion and the home you forget that like I still do love my beauty oh there's one more thing I needed to show you I can't believe I almost forgot ah! now this is one I have not been waiting to use because I'm obsessed with it. It arrived and I sprayed it and I was like, oh my word. So this is the new release from Jo Malone. This is a part of their Cologne Intense range. I don't know if this is limited edition. It doesn't say anywhere that it is, but it's in a red bottle, which indicates it's a limited edition bottle. So I don't know if it's like the bottle's limited edition, but then after that it will carry on like the normal packaging. I'm not entirely sure. However, this perfume. Oh my word. I didn't think I could find a perfume that I could top from Jo Malone. I love their perfumes. I have in my collection Blackberry and Bay, which is kind of like my everyday scent. It's usually the scent that I wear as like my base and then I layer up on top of that. Blackberry and Bay, Wood Sage and Sea Salt, Honeysuckle and Divana, Divina, Divana. Um, and then Peony and Blush Suede is my all time favorite. So I've got quite a few. Oh, and also Fig and Lotus Flower is a recent one that I got. Um, so I have quite a few and Peony and Blush Suede has always been like my pow perfume from Jo Malone like I'll wear Black Room Bay every single day I love it it's my everyday scent but if I want to like if it's like a special occasion I want to really feel like gorgeous and ready to go and like pretty I'll layer it on top of Peony and Blush Suede and I never thought I would find a perfume that I liked more than Peony and Blush Suede I think I found it I am obsessed obsessed it is so so gorgeous it's quite floral but it's not too like too floral, I would say if you like Peony and Blush Suede, you're going to love this scent, absolutely love it. And I think this is gonna be quite a nice one to layer up as well. Um, obviously Jo Malone is very big on layering their perfume, so I always really like seeing what kind of like mix as well and what like matches together. Um, but yeah, this is just absolutely stunning. I love it, I love the packaging as well. It's so, so gorgeous. I will link it down below because you're gonna want this in your life. You're not even gonna want it, you're going to need this in your life and this is actually kind of remind me because i won't lie since lockdown i've kind of been forgetting to wear perfume and i forget how much perfume makes me feel a bit like elevated and like ready for the day and it kind of like it's almost like completes my makeup routine and this is really reminding me like you need to get your, your perfumes out give yourself a little spritz in the morning and i love it with jo malone because like when you waft your arm past yourself like you can smell it and i just love that i think it's so so nice so this has definitely reminded me to get my perfumes out spray myself in the morning and it kind of like helps elevate my mood um so yeah so there we go that is actually the final of the pr unboxing as i said i'll link everything down below for you guys if you want to shop anything from this um yeah <laughs> I feel like today has probably been like one of the heaviest makeup and beauty vlogs that I have done in a very, very long time. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing some like new bits, enjoyed seeing my everyday makeup. As I said, I've had lots of requests to do this recently. So I wanted to make sure that I could do that for you guys and show you it and be a little bit braver and actually come on like makeupless. That's a big thing. I'm going to, it's it's, it's gonna I'm gonna get that feeling all over again when I have to edit this video um but if you're seeing this then I was brave I uploaded it it's on the internet it's out there for the world to see my bare makeupless face um and fairly bad acne at the moment but we're on the road to recovery we are on the road to recovery I'm doing a lot a lot to try and like get my skin better let me know if you want to see like a skincare routine um like an acne skincare routine and like how I'm kind of dealing with it um that might be quite interesting but yeah without further ado i feel like i should finish this vlog here because it's been a long one and you guys probably wanting to get on with the rest of your day so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video hope you enjoyed it coming along with me seeing my everyday makeup seeing what new in beauty bits are in the world right now which is really really exciting i feel like all the spring launches are coming and it's making me very excited for warmer weather um but yeah if you did enjoy this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new around here i'd love it if you subscribe you can come and join us for more videos and i will see you guys in my next one bye